Hallo Leute, willkommen zur neuen Folge von Doki Doki Blue Skies. Mal letzte Folge hatten wir die äh, Veränderung. <lacht> Mir ist nichts Besseres eingefallen. Wir hatten die äh, Deviation, die wir Dings äh, jetzt für das Schlecht einig haben. Jetzt eigentlich, also wir hatten ja, äh, wenn man der Route nachgeht, hat man den riesen Streit mit Yuri und alles so. Und wenn man auf der richtigen Route ist, bis auf der guten Route, dann versöhnt man sich ein bisschen über das Telefon und dann redet man in der Schule. Hier hingegen trifft man, äh, also hat man den ersten Kontakt wieder in der Schule, hat gar kein äh, Gespräch oder irgendwas so und endet sogar damit, dass die Juri sich wieder selbst verletzt und alles so und halt extremst schlecht äh, gelaunt ist natürlich, weil man extrem viele Sorgen hat und alles so und jetzt ist der Tag nach oder so und ich weiß noch nicht, was und so weiter, aber ui. Once again, I'm moodly pulled out of a warm, comfortable snooze by the invasive blaring of my alarm on my phone. Still half asleep, I'm found for the offending item and slammed the alarm off, but the damage has already been done. Ugh. I bet it wastes no time reminding me of what happened. Yesterday we both, both during lunch and during the club meeting. Wonderful. Staying at the day in a bad mood is perhaps the worst way to start it. Good morning. I give a non compliment grunt in reply. One looks for a coffee with a look of surprise in her features. Good to see you as well, Kazuma. Ah, not a morning person, Mom, you know that. Unfortunately, not even Sarah was really able to cheer me up yesterday after school. She really tried, but I just couldn't get you off my mind. Mom is telling me as she silenced me. There's no way I'd be able to hide the fact that I'm in bad mood. So I'm mentally preparing myself for a flurry of questions. It feels like the Mutter wird es direkt wissen. You don't seem so chipper today. What's wrong, honey? Nothing. She sighs to herself. I can't reach you like a book, Kazuma. It's you, isn't it? But how did... Just called motherly intuition, ich wusste es. What happened? Kazuma, I can't help you unless you let me. Ah, we're not in to delve into it. I turn as gentle as she, as she speaks. I had not started to upset, but don't... But please don't bottle things up. Communication is the most imp uh, important aspect of any... We yeah, I'm well, of, well, I'm well aware of that. I have to get going anyway. I don't want to be late. Setting a piece of toast and warming it to my mouth, I head out of the kitchen, doing my best to avoid what I can only assume as a disappointed look on mom's face. Morning lessons are feeling like such a drag. I find it harder and harder to concentrate. My mind keeps fucking questions that I'd rather not be asked. Such as, have I caused irreversible damage with Yuri? We're not over, are we? I wince as I go over the things I said to her on Friday every evening. Calling her arms like an ugly mess, but seeing her scratch or stuff like that, it was scary. Of course, I'd be, able, I'd be li more liable to panic and saying something stupid. But looking at his face serves as a chilling reminder that boundaries were definitely crossed that day. Lunch by the wings. At least spending time with the girls might take my mind off it, if not for a while, a little while. As I enter the club, I immediately noticed that both Yui and Monica aren't in. Well, Monica's fairly hit or miss, given how busy, busy her schedule is. But Yui? I feel that something is the miss starts to bubble up. Hey, Cosmo. Hi, just us today? Yeah, looks like it. Unless Monica shows up, which wouldn't surprise me. Neither of you have seen Yuri. So you exchange his looks with Snetsky. There's no in the look of concern on both of the faces. No, we thought you might know. I shrug. Fat chats uh, of that. Seen how uh, you've seen how little she's been talking to me recently. I've been worried about her ever since I saw her in the bathroom yesterday. Snetsky knows her eyes at me. Hey, what's up with that? You never told us. Yeah, I'm not gonna keep that that way. Anyway guys, anyway guys, I think we should go and find her. What do you think? I know she said she wanted to be alone yesterday, but... Yeah, let's do it, come on. Hey, wait for me! I'll take the girl- I'll take the girl's bathroom. Hey, Nesky, do you want to check her home room? Yeah, sure. I'll take- uh, I'll try the courtyard on the roof then. If we hastily made plans, we each set off for a separate destination. Despite my best efforts, I'm not having any luck finding her. Although, this doesn't surprise me. To be honest, the only place I could imagine of being right now would be the girls' toilets. Trying to call the disc uh, disquiet in my stomach ahead for the roof. Fresh da, weil das kann ich mir vorstellen. Just as I thought. Empty. With heavy heart, I head back downstairs. Any luck? Wahrscheinlich nicht. So he shakes her head dejectedly. Maybe she doesn't. She didn't come in today? Yeah, she didn't. One of her classmates told me. Kazma, couldn't you couldn't you have just called her? You say that like she actually responded to me. Huh. Something really bad went down between you two, didn't it? I don't answer. 
Don't worry, guys. She's probably just feeling sick or something. You isn't the kind to skip school. You serious, White. You isn't warned by any means. Which either means she's Ill, Ill or... Well, lunch bell rings. Well, it sounds like a million miles away. Dimly, I'm aware of so Netsky talking. Anyway, I'll see you two at the club, okay? Netsky mutters something that I don't catch. Yeah, but I have no intention of sticking around for the rest of the school day. Let know the literature club meeting. Taking a deep breath, I knock on the front door. Please open, please open, please open. Seconds that pass uh, by feel like hours. Nothing. Abandoning the diplomatic approach, I pound the door much harder. Each knock reflects the perspiration of feeling. Nothing. Disappointment and uh, worry flare up, both as strong as the other. I restlessly uh, piss on the spot, pondering my options. Our breaking is in is tempting, and even I know that's way too over the top. I check my phone, knowing full well I won't have any messages or calls from her. I sure love be, I sure love being proven correct. It's only 1380, so I can't come home yet. Mom would flip if she knew I was ditching school. I guess my bed is just to sit tight for a couple of hours. Yeah, it's a pretty bad plan, but unfortunately, still have our, still, it's all I have right now. And yet, a few hours later, still no luck. My stomach gurgles, and I can really feel the stiffness in my joints from having sat down for so long. And of course, nothing from Yuri. I guess towards the door. Who knows what Yuri is doing within? Well, if she is, and even inside. <clears throat> I could call the police and ask for a welfare check. Seems a little drastic, though. Plus, if she's fine and doesn't want to talk, I'm pretty sure police intervention will, f will make things even worse. That is, if they can, if they can get any worse. With a surge of anger, I smash on the door one more time. Much like with me kicking the wall, it achieves nothing except a white-hot pain in my fist. My stubble gurgles again as a wave of bitter frustration rolls over me once more. I just waited to sit hours of my life for absolutely nothing. Of my girlfriend who uh, won't even speak to me. I shake my head. I did come to this. But he ends. Oh, that sieht gar nicht gut aus. Also, ihr könnt uns wahrscheinlich äh, durch das Original spielen, beziehungsweise die Tendenzen, die wir auch hier sehen, schon denken wahrscheinlich, was passieren wird, aber... Alter! Kasma? What? Mom just says to the toes, I'm half oddly you get trying to eat. You need to eat. You don't want to be late for school. Oh, I'm not hungry. Shies quietly. I know you're upset, sweetheart, but you can't stay like this forever. I'm sure that whatever's going on between you and you will get better. I really hope so, Mom. It's just the nature of teenage love, I'm afraid. Anyway, shouldn't you be going now? I really look up the clock. She's right. Yeah, I'll see you later then. Bye, Kazuma. Have a good day. In spite of myself, I find myself uh, walking towards Yuri's house. I know I'll just likely just get annoyed again, but a part of me tells me that I have to try. It, I have to, to at least try. Still can't wait. And here we are. That dark red door, that dark red barrier that Yuri hides behind. Yuri? Here I am, calling out to the door. Trying to check off how ridiculous this must look. I press on. Look, I know things aren't right between us. But nearly snored after I realized what I just said. That must be the understatement of the say sent me. Oh, please, just talk to me. I'm worried about you, you know? Especially after I found you in the girl's bathroom. Please? You, I know you're there. Well, I know you're home at least. Although there's a good chance that you're in the bedroom and I'm talking to no one at all. Voice cracks a bit with emotion. Yuri, I'm, I'm begging you. Please hear me. Please be okay. I just want you to be happy. Yuri! Nothing. I sigh and close my eyes, slumping down against the door. I was an idiot for thinking this would gone any differently. Question is, do I commit an entire day to me waiting here, or do I cut my losses and... The soft sound of a click and the door slowly cracking open jolts me, me to a feet. Through the slightly ajar doorway, I can see very unsure looking on Yuri. For a moment, there's silence between us. A silence that actually feels very, very awkward. Can I come in? Firstly, she looks down, biting her lip. In my mind's eye, I can practically see her receding back behind her shell again. That shell that her father helped crack for good. Or, um, or we can just talk here if you're not comfortable letting me in. Honestly, I'll take whatever I can get at this point. At my words, Yui nods and slowly swings the doors open. I can hardly dare to believe she's even talking to me again. On paper, it sounds ridiculous. Who would internally celebrate talking to a girlfriend again? But after everything what's happened, that's happened, it just goes to show the severity of the situation. So, um, 
Seriously jamming my hands on my pockets, I started to get some words off my mouth. Anything to break this awkward silence. But I don't even know where to start. There are so many things I feel like I should say. The weight of this argument feels like it's weighing even heavier on my shoulders right now. It's looking at me with an expression both expectant and sad. None of us know how to make the first move. Where have you been? Oh, of course, I would with such a stupid question. I've been okay. More silence. I see. That's... that's good. It's almost laughable. She can't really think that I believe she's been okay, right? Oh, and here it comes again. My damn sarcastic side. Cosme, you're going to have to make sure you don't accidentally snap at Yuri. Lord knows when the next time I'll get to talk to her will be. Funny how my emotions fluctuate so finely nowadays. At least when it comes to Yuri. From a guild and sad to strangle and frustration. Mine's been scrabbled since our fight. So I'm just trying to figure out what to say. There's so much we have to talk about that I don't know how to start. Same here. Yeah. Come on, Cosma. Just talk to her. I I just wish you could go back in time to how we used to be. Yeah, I miss being with you, and I'm so worried about you. Those happy times where we could just chit chat and giggle over nothing. I'd give anything to go back to those times. Well, at least you still have Sia to do that, to do that all day with. So, why are you bringing her into this? It's totally irrelevant to what's been going on between us. So, I'm just. What I meant to say was, regardless of what happens, we'll always be able to turn to her. You, I feel like you already made up your mind about this. Seems to us you resigned yourself to never change and just picking up. Please tell me I'm wrong. It's hard to talk about these matters. I know it's hard. You think I don't know that? But if you want to fix things, we have to talk. I, I know. If you know, then why have you been ignoring me for an entire week? Despite my best efforts to remain calm, I can feel my temper flaring up again. I just want to talk to you, to someone that solve our problems, somehow solve our problems together. But how am I supposed to do that if I don't, if you don't communicate with me? A relationship can't be safe if it's just me working on it. How do you think it makes me feel? Look, I know that you have problems that are probably outside the realm of my comprehension. A hint of sarcasm begins to unwillingly creep into my words. All this stuff is seriously affecting my own mental health too. My feelings are invalidated because you may have more and difficult problems to deal with, right? I never said. Yes, you might not intend to, but sometimes I feel like implications like that weigh down on me. Oh, come on, you. If I can talk about these things that I never told anyone else before, why can't you? I hate. Okay, I know that you're probably unsure of what to say first, so how about we start with the argument? Could you tell me your side of it? What did I say that upset you so much? I feel like I'm being too aggressive now, but I can't help it. And I still have to get answers off so while I still can. You wouldn't understand. Have you not been listening to the thing I've said? I was supposed to understand if you're not helping me to see your perspective. Hasn't She looks down, fleeing with a stand of hair. I I can't. You what? I can't deal with all this right now. What are you talking about? If you can't even understand this, how am I supposed to explain with, with why the things you said were hurtful? And again with the lack of communication. Haven't you hurt yourself? You know how much you've been pushing me in this conversation? Look, sorry if I'm being kind of blunt right now. What else am I supposed to do? I already tried giving you space and playing the good cop. So you can't blame me for trying to be more assertive this time. I wouldn't call this being assertive. Now then what would you call this, huh? You just forget about social constraints and politeness for a moment. Even if your honest feelings are gonna hurt me, I want to hear them. If you believe politeness is the only thing stopping me from talking, then you must not know me as well as you thought. Huh? But that's besides the point. Okay, but I'm serious when I said that you can lie, lay it on me. Kazuma, just tell me you're thinking, you're thinking already. Can you stop attacking me for one second? Uh, attacking? Uh, I'm sorry if it feels like I'm attacking you, but it's the only thing that seemed to have worked so far. What do you want to do then? Not say anything. I want you to do what you have been doing all along. That is, until the argument. But, I... What was it? Cosmo or Yuri? That's what Yuri, okay. But, I clearly didn't make too big of a difference acting that way. All this time I've been trying to gently nag at you to open up and go to therapy and to actually do something to fix your problems. Look at where we are now. So now you finally show your two-face. What? I should know that no one could be that kind of patient towards me. All this time you've just been a fair weather friend. Or should I say boyfriend? 
What are you on about now? You can't handle our relationship unless everything is happy. Back then you let me believe that you support me no matter what. Even when you knew what I was, that I was getting bullied. Even you found out how much of a freak I am. Everything was just a lie, I guess. All you want to do is dump me at the therapist's office to cure me. That's totally not what I'm trying to say at all. And are you going to just forget about everything I've done out of love for you? I've helped you to do things like deliver books at school countless times. Not to mention all the times I helped you to talk to cashiers and strangers. But don't forget all the phone calls I've made for you too. I stood beside you through thick and thin. I have to think up dozens of pep talks on the spot. All that just to help you feel better about everything. Lu Yubi looks down. Unable to meet my eyes anymore. Some emotion guilt, maybe. Or shame. Clouds the violet of her irises. And ab about all my talk of therapy. Well, what am I so meant to do here? Do you really think suffering is something I'm experienced with? I only found out about your scars by accident. You haven't told the other girls or even your parents, so... Kazma, do not talk about my parents. Kind of scary how I can always tangle your video's mood spike from bleak distress to anger. Still, I can't seem to stop myself from pressing on. Why not? Don't forget I comforted you about that too. And you know what? If you didn't communicate with them, if they couldn't even help you, how am I supposed to do that? You know nothing about the relationship I've had with them. You know, you were right. I'm starting to believe that I don't know much about you either. I don't even know why your argument happened in the first place. Or why this conversation turned into another argument. Skull raises her voice as she snaps back at me. You know some of my darkest secrets. It is still incessant in insisting you know nothing of me? Yeah, I am, because apparently nothing's changed since the very beginning. Le relationship is stagnant, and all, all your, your problems are still running rampant or combination is in shambles. It's supposed to be talking about all this because it leads to solutions. Or at least it's meant to do that. Take yourself home. What, what would be your solution to that? If you say therapy. Yeah, it is therapy. But it's always a surprise you don't want to try it. Therapy is... Therapy isn't the magical fix that you... <clears throat> therapy isn't the all magical fix that you, your naive, idealistic viewpoint leads you to think it is, Mahasma. I'm trying to push you to change for the better, Yuri. This is why you're never going to fix a problem. In fact, that's probably why we've been having fights lately. You barely talk about what's bothering you until it's way, way too late, and you've adopted the worst way of dealing with your issues, and you just blatantly refuse to try and deal with out of it. How are you ever going to get better? Do you even want to get better? I'm starting to think you don't. You might not like it, but you're gonna have to do uh, stuff you don't like if you don't if you want to change. You can't stay a coddled little girl forever. Are you going to grow up and realize this? There's a moment of silence for a moment, then suddenly tears begin leaking out of Yuri's face. But despite the tears, there's a quiet fear in her face. You're not going to be the one to fix me. She clenched her hands tightly in fists, digging her finger nails in her palms, hard enough to turn her off nails white. Relationships aren't a cure all, and it's about time you got that through your fucking hats. For a moment I was stunned in the silence. I never heard Yuri swear up before. The magnitude of the intensity behind her uh, words makes me realize just how serious the re situation really is. If you think that, you're even more stupid than I thought. Without waiting for any reaction, she slams the door in my face with surprising force. However, not even the loud slam of the door breaks me out of my stupor. I stamp down near the door stop and wait for my sense to slowly return. The hopelessness of the situation sinks in. I stare at the door, not even trying to fight off the waves of despair crossing through me. How is it possible that things got even worse? How is it possible that once more, and once again, it's separated from you by its physical barrier? A smooth brown hue of the door taunts me. The more miserable stare at it, the more it feels like some sort of impenetrable fortress. The shock of being thrown out and hearing Yuri swear, which blunted the anger I've never been feeling, is quickly ebbing it away, leaving only resentment in its wake. Yeah, that's right, just close to all me, because that really fixed the problems, won't it? I bang fiercely in the door once more, but this time, there's complete silence. A sign that concerts hugely against the whirlwind in my head. It's almost funny how someone so eloquent and expressive for her language is so good, it's so god off like communicating, you know? Well, it'd be funny if it weren't so sad. With one last bang on the door, I turn on my heel and leave. Despite the sadistic part of me enjoying the world of fear I just threw at her, there's no denying the bitter aftertaste of my worst. Well, there's no point staying here. With an annoyed sigh, I remember that I'm meant to be at school. Which means I, home is a no-go for now. Guess I have to come sometime.
I don't know why I chose this place in particular. My feet have been guiding me and my brain just followed along. As if I were an autopilot. The only thing I'm focusing at the moment are the words, well, if you more like bullets. I feel a bit tired between us just now. I pick a warp and throw it as hard as I can. It's coughing in a sense. Putting all my energy into physical action affords me a tiny bit of relief. All you want to do is dump me at the therapist's office to cure me. Is this how she fucking sees things? Have you of getting to know her, dating her, only to be told that she's the colors she thinks I am? I pick a number walk and throw as hard as I can, but this time, the sensation does little to quiet my anger. I'm trying here, Yuri. I'm trying my fucking best. But you're not giving me anything to go off. How am I meant to know when I'm doing well, or how to correct my wanderings if you straight up refuse to talk to me? How was I meant to know that you feel like you had to have sex? How am I meant to know anything at all? What even are we? This isn't how a boyfriend and girlfriend should act. It's sad. Why the beginning of a relationship wondered about what we were? And now? It looks like this is the end of a relationship. I am wanting a sad thing again. Maybe. Maybe things will just blow over. Couples argue all the time. They do, but... A winces they call it the quiet fear in her voice as she wants me not to talk about her parents. Deep down, I know I will accept some of sort of burden under me. Again. The question is, can I redeem myself? Questioning goes over me throughout the day, and even after I'm back at home. Ja, das sieht gar nicht gut aus. Man versteht natürlich, dass Kasuma extrem aggressiv unterwegs ist, weil er will einfach Dings für Yuri da sein, aber weil sie keine Kommunikation und alles gibt und mit den kompletten Reizen und alles so, geht einfach gar nichts mehr. Und es führt halt zu einem blöden Teufelskreis, wo Yuri äh, nicht den, äh, den Raum und die Geduld äh, bekommt, die sie braucht, um äh, Dings darüber zu sprechen. Und Kasuma wiederholt seinen Fehler nach und nach einfach und wird sogar schlimmer eigentlich nur wegen der ganzen Gereiztheit. Puh. Das wird nicht gut enden. Und ich kann mir so gut vorstellen, dass vielleicht sogar letzte, die nächste Folge die letzte ist, was Yuri Suta angeht. Aber ja, das sehen wir in der nächsten Folge. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Wir sehen uns dann bei der nächsten Folge. Bereitet euch vor, weil ich glaube, wir werden ganz viele Schlimme äh, äh, zu, zu sehen bekommen. Und ja, danke fürs Zuschauen. Wir sehen uns beim nächsten Mal. Tschö und pass auf euch auf.